was at a high level engagement. Mr. President, I assured him of Nigeria's support. Uh, he expressed condolences at the, the, the passing of the Marshal. How grateful we are uh, as a country and him personally uh, with the role that uh, Chad and under the Marshal have played in supporting Nigeria in the fight against terrorism. That a lot of the gains that have been made um, have, was really because of Chad's very strong uh, support together also with Niger. And, um, you know, he said that uh, there are two big institutions. Um, that are based in Chad. Uh, there's the Lake Chad Basin Commission and there's also the Multinational Joint Task Force and that Nigeria will, um, uh, over the next 18 months, uh, continue to strengthen those two institutions because in strengthening those two institutions is also helping the government of Chad and strengthening uh, Chad. Lieutenant General Muhammad Idris Deby, who explained to President Muhammad Buhari circumstances surrounding his coming to power thanks Nigeria for the solidarity shown after the passage of the former president. The main objective of the Transitional Military Council, he said, is national security and cohesion, as further explained by Geoffrey Oyama. Well, he briefed Mr. President uh, on the roadmap uh, uh, in Chad, uh, how they came about um, this uh, uh, succession, and um, he explained the, um, that they've appointed as Prime Minister the, um, the leader of the opposition who came second in the elections, and that uh, he has been charged with now organizing uh, free, fair, democratic elections. But the most important thing is that we do not have a vacuum uh, in Chad, and that Chad will continue need to play a very strong and important role with the side of uh, Nigeria and the other uh, multinational joint forces countries uh, in the battle against uh, terrorism. So that cooperation, I think, is uh, we're now assured that it will continue and that we need not worry about a political or power vacuum in Chad. During the visit, the Chadian leader said the Transitional Council is committed to democratic, free and fair polls in 18 months. He assured President Buhari, whom he acknowledged knowledge to be very close to his father, that they are ready to be guided by him and indeed Nigeria in their journey to constitutional order. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And to effectively address insecurity in the country, guest on Good Morning Nigeria advocate restructuring that will include devolution of powers and community policing as key to achieving results. They also maintain that implementation of issues raised in the Governor's Forum communique will go a long way in preferring solutions to the security challenges. Alika Okwanachi Arua reports. The current wave of insecurity across the country has become a source of worry to all classes of the society. This also prompted the assemblage of leaders of diverse shades on Good Morning Nigeria to point the way forward, amongst them, governors. The differences in their backgrounds, notwithstanding, the guests agree the nation's challenge have political, economic, and legal undertones. The guests suggest that drastic measures, along with political will, is needed to bring the situation under control. Most importantly, is uh, the security challenge is we are facing in the country today. And uh, we, we, we have sat down and deeply considered that as major priority and that something has to be done so that our people can go about their lives without fear. We have concern about even the capacity of the security forces. The capacity, the capacity in the sense that the number that we have for us were inadequate. We had also concern about the, the, the capacity in, 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 in terms of technology. And if that is a, a, a problem, let us also see where to raise, to get funds, to also raise their standard. They also advise that the time is right to turn to community policing, and with it, the creation of state police. I think in this country now, we really need leaders who can come courageously to face the challenges that are facing all of us. I, I am glad that the leaders, you know, because the governors are the real leaders of the people, uh, they are closest to their communities, that they have taken the bull by the horn and that they have come together and they've come up with this resolution. To regain confidence and trust from members of the public, they appeal to leaders at different tiers of government to be transparent and accountable to the people. In Abuja, Alika Wanachi, Arua, Intinus.
The need for Nigerians to rise above petty differences and harness the positives in their diversity has again been re echoed. Former head of service Sally Isabello says contemplating the vision is out of the question as the nation is, uh, is historically rooted and linked across board. Lydia Samson spoke with some Nigerians on fostering religious tolerance and national unity. Much has been said about the undiluted religious tolerance, peaceful coexistence and unity experienced way back in the history of the country. You may call them die-hard optimists. Many Nigerians believe these feelings can still be rekindled with genuine commitment from all. If you believe in the national anthem and our national prayer, everything that we need to do to enable us to live in peace is embedded in these two important aspects of our life. Our blind spots in Nigeria maybe three or four. Language religion, uh, region, and perhaps economic means. If each and every one of us as a Nigerian decides to look beyond his blind, these four blind spots, Nigeria will be united. I call on all Nigerians, let us remain united. Let us respect each other. Let's maintain our diversity. Growing up as a child, we just couldn't wait for celebrations, irrespective of our religious leanings. For us, it was all about getting up, getting dressed, going out to have fun. The role of journalism fostering unity, Chairman NUJFCT Council, Emmanuel Ogwechi says, is critical. As journalists, what we can do is that we must bridge the gap, the fault lines in our reports, because our reports are critical in promoting national unity. We should ensure that we are professional and objective in whatever we report. They are unanimous that making Nigeria work is a solemn responsibility bestowed on all stakeholders. This, they say, is the only way to be quick to the next generation, a strong nation where peace and justice reign. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. INEC office in Udeno local government area of Enugu state has been set ablaze. The incident took place around 8.40 p.m. on Thursday, 13th May 2021, although no casualty was reported. However, the office building was extensively damaged while electoral materials and office equipment were destroyed in spite of efforts by the Enugu state's fire service to contain the inferno. This is the third, third incident involving INEC's local government offices in three states in less than two weeks. INEC National Commissioner for Information, Festus Okoye, says the commission will convene an emergency meeting with all the resident electoral commissioners on Wednesday, 19th May 2021 in Abuja, ahead of a meeting with security agencies to put an end to the increasing rate of attacks on INEC facilities. Now, police in Zamfara State have succeeded in arresting some five suspected notorious bandits and kidnappers who have been allegedly terrorizing communities in the northern part of the country over the years. The suspects, including a notorious gun runner from Niger Republic, who confessed to have sold more than 450 rifles to criminals in Nigeria, were paraded at the State Police Command Headquarters, Gusau. Jamilu Ibrahim has the details. The five suspected notorious armed bandits and kidnappers paraded at the Zamfara State Police Command headquarters Gusau are said to have been terrorizing communities in Zamfara, Kaduna, Kasina, Niger and Kogi states over the years. They were arrested through the efforts of troops of the Federal Intelligence Investigation Bureau and Special Tactical Squad recently deployed to Zamfara State by the police force headquarters Abuja. <laughs> Also paraded is a driver who allegedly conveys kidnapped victims to the bandits' enclaves and a Nigerian who specializes in supplying sophisticated weapons to bandits in northern part of Nigeria. The notorious Gorana has confessed to have sold no fewer than 4,500 rifles to different gangs of criminals in the region within the past three years. One of the paraded suspects who hails from Niger State and operates within Kagarku in Chukwu local government areas of Kaduna State says he has been in the crime for more than three years and has killed five of his kidnapped victims whose families could not afford to pay for ransom. This suspect often interrogation by police confessed to other series of kidnappings in the first state, where ransom was said to have been paid. 
Items recovered from the suspects include four AK-49 rifles, nine magazines, 960 live ammunition, and assorted charms, among other exhibits. In Gusau, Jamilu Ibrahim, NTA News. Now let's bring you up to speed with other stories. Federal government's effort in reviving the rail sector in Nigeria is witnessing setback with massive vandalism of railway infrastructure. Oyenaya Kaluoka has the story. More than 3,000 commuters use this train daily. Data the Wari Rail Line, since it was inaugurated in 2020, has recorded more than 200% increase of passengers' traffic. Although it's nice, breaking the journey now is got more of an experience trying to go through the train. This rail line, which has brought relief to so many passengers, is now being threatened due to activities of vendors. This latest video shows the act of vandalism of rail tracks at the Itakbe Wari rail line between the Ajekuta and Itakbe section. The vandals used a saw-like object to cut through the rail line to a point where the pieces could be charted away. There are many more across the country. Both the narrow and standard gauge rail lines have been affected. From Port Harcourt to Enugu, Nasarawa, Makodi, Lafia, and Kaduna to Zaria. In some cases, striping the entire railway track naked. These important components, security agencies said, are sold in the black markets. The Nigerian Railway Corporation disclosed that more than 160 people have been arrested and called on benefiting communities to be proactive in protecting the equipment as it will cost the federal government billions of naira to replace them. Oyinea Karo Oka, NTA News. Meanwhile, five persons suspected to have vandalized the newly rehabilitated Itakpe Wari rail track at Adogo near Ajakuta in Kogi State have been arrested by police operatives and paraded by the Delta State Police Command. Solomon at DIA Dehin now brings us the report. The suspects were alleged to have caught loop lines made for train crossing around Adogo in Ajakuta local government area of Kogi State along Itakpe Wari rail line following a tip off. Men of the Delta State Police Command caught up with the vandals while on their way to dispose their loot. Efforts to get further confirmation from the Kogi State Police Command proved abortive. However, a source within the command disclosed that the Kogi State Police is awaiting briefing by the sister command in Delta State. Their act was described as a sabotage to the nation, especially now that efforts are being made by the federal government to reposition the rail transportation in Nigeria. Nigerians have been crying for the resuscitation of the railways. And now that this administration has made it possible, traveling is easier, convenient, comfortable, cheaper, by vandalizing and taking away the items possibly to go and sell is a sabotage. But they are criminals, and I think the law should take its rightful course. We should have penalties that deal with such persons. The host community need to encourage federal government by providing their own security in their own way. Despite the act of vandalism, it has not affected operations of rail services along the corridor. Solomon Ayedehi, NTA News. And I'm now being joined by Fidet O'Hara, the Managing Director of Nigerian Railway Corporation, to speak more on the renewed vandalism on the rail lines. You're welcome to Network News, sir. Good evening, Nigeria. Good evening to everybody. Uh, Can we have an update on areas affecting the component stolen and what it means to the concerted efforts by the federal government to restore the glory and beauty of traveling by rail across Nigeria? Can we have an update on that? Well, a patrol and inspection could have been disastrous because the many train rides from Wari to Itakbe would have delayed or capsized. But for the staff that did their duty well, identify that some portion of the rail, there was an attempt, that's about 260, 260 meters of it have been cut, either by uh, uh, gas or uh, using the axle blades. 
So on uh, noticing it, a C trip was sent out and the engineers moved to site to ensure that the train continued in her journey by using the loop line. It happened between Itakbe and Ajakuta. And that is, uh, that is uh, what you call the freight loop line. It's supposed to be made for loading iron ore. We have multiple lines. One of them was affected. So we have to switch to the other line to uh, continue operation of the trains. The rate of violation in the country, especially on the rail infrastructure, is alarming. Uh, it, it, it got to a very alarming stage during the uh, COVID shutdown. And uh, on our return back from the lockdown, on the Eastern Agris, Port Harcourt, uh, uh, Lafia, Langalanga, Nasarawa, Benue, like uh, Otobo, for instance, a lot of vandalization took place and between Mina and Kaduna. But it's quite alarming that uh, Nigerians can't go to that extent of attacking uh, a track, a modern track. Indeed, a very sad situation. Now, how has this affected movement in areas that train services are operational and the safety of passengers too? Did you get me? Did you get me? Uh, it seems we've uh, sort of lost contact on the visual uh, audio from Enugu. You know, thank you so much for coming on Network News. And this is NTA Network News. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Will this penalty be the decider? It's going through the player's mind here. You could cut the tension with a knife. Is there one more twist in this long, rocky road to the final? And here's the kick. And he scores! They've taken the win. They're through. Don't worry, my boy. There's always a next time. It's in to Icarlo from the wing. Join the winning team and stream every match with Glow Special Data Plans. For everything Glow, dial star triple seven hash. Great supporters of football. Glow. Join over 700,000 satisfied members and enjoy the premium experience at our offices across the 36 states in Nigeria, including the FCT. Call 09-4615-700-704 to make the switch today. Premium Pension. Active today. Premium tomorrow. Barakat Asala from the Federal Road Safety Commission. The Federal Road Safety Corps appreciates the continuous support being received from the motoring public. Road traffic crashes are trending down and concerted effort is being made by the government to improve our road safety management. As celebration approaches, it is expected that road users will undertake trips to visit families and loved ones. The call encourages you to conduct vehicle safety checks before embarking on your trip. Avoid night journeys, use your seat belts, avoid overloading and driving above prescribed speed limits. Comply with road traffic laws and regulations. Prevention is always the best approach 
to avoid the traffic crashes and injuries. I implore you all to please partner with FRSC to reduce road traffic crashes on our highways. Drive to save a life. I wish you all a happy celebration. Phone is 10. Smart is 10. Fast is 10. Elegance is 10. My experience is 10. Redmi Note 10 Pro. Challenge the boundaries. Get the Redmi Note 10 Pro. Built with 108 megapixel camera, 120 hertz AMOLED display, and Qualcomm Snapdragon 732G, as well as 33 watts fast charge. The Redmi Note 10 Pro. Powered by Xiaomi. <sighs> Day ahead. New Oval Team 3 in 1. Smart choice for smart kids. The federal government of Nigeria is still conducting the nationwide COVID 19 vaccination. In addition to health workers, frontline workers aged 18 years and above and persons aged 50 years and above are advised to visit any designated vaccination site to receive the COVID-19 vaccine free of charge. The vaccine is safe, protects against COVID-19 and helps to restore socio-economic activities in the country. After your first dose, check your vaccination card for the date of the second dose. Ensure you receive the second dose for full protection against COVID-19. Say yes to COVID-19 vaccine. For inquiries, call the COVID-19 vaccine call center on 0700-220-1122. This message is from the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency. Fulham travel to St. Mary's after the heartbreak of relegation. Will they have any heart left to put up a fight against Southampton this Saturday? It's Southampton versus Fulham on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 2.30 p.m. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijabu in association with Joel.com. You can get more news and updates on www.nta.ng or follow us on our Twitter handle at NTA News Now. You can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook forward slash NTA Network News. And also stay connected and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News Online. Also remember to watch our news live streaming at www.nta.ng forward slash live. The World Health Organization has described the FCT administration's response to COVID-19 pandemic and other health challenges as one of the best in Nigeria. The country representative for Nigeria, Dr. Walter Mulombo, made this remark when a delegation of WHO paid a visit to the FCT minister, Mohamed Musabello, on some key public health issues. If I Ezumba has details. Speaking during the visit, the WHO representative for Nigeria, Dr. Mulumbu, appreciated the leadership of Mohamed Musa Belu in the ongoing COVID-19 response, which he clearly demonstrates his commitment at attaining the highest state of health for the FCT residents. We also congratulate your efforts in establishing the modular laboratory through public-private partnership to improve access to testing for COVID-19. And other diseases. FCT Minister Mohamed Musa Belu hailed the WHO office in the FCT for its successes and pledged the administration support for it and other UN programs within the territory. The minister also made known that emphasis will be placed on budgetary support and counterpart funding in order to improve funding for WHO and other public health related programs. Uh, we had a huge pool of well qualified staff at the primary health care centers across the, 
the, the, the area, I mean the, the FCT, and that have been very helpful. And of course, your coal facilities for storage of all the vaccines for polio have come in very handy for the distribution of the COVID vaccines. So the minister also advised the World Health Organization to continuously engage relevant private sector stakeholders within the country for improved funding of each polio and other programs. In Abuja, Ifani, Isoba, and Chinos. Authorities at the Malam Abinu Kano International Airport have continued to put stringent safety measures following reported cases of third wave and new variant of COVID-19 in some countries to prevent passengers from re-importing the virus into the country. Mohamed Rabiu Ali reports. Malam Aminu Kano International Airport is usually characterized by heavy traffic of international flights. With the new variant and third wave of coronavirus in some parts of the world, particularly India and Brazil, safety managers have brought out their arsenals at the international wing of the airport for full protection of the country against COVID-19. Passengers coming in and out of the country have to undergo rigorous checks, which include sanitizing hands, physical distancing, temperature check, and COVID-19 certification. Everything is going perfect. Uh, I'm happy to be in Nigeria for the first time and hopefully things will roll very good. It has never experienced any kind of happening now. This development, it's a real development actually. What happened to the Abuchiru in Nigeria? I'm happy for what I have seen on ground in terms of measures against COVID-19. Officials at the Aminu Kano International Airport who declined to speak on camera told NTA News that Public enlightenment campaign has been mounted in and around the airport to create awareness. These and other measures put in place, they say, will no doubt help in overcoming the challenge of importing the new variant into the country. Muhammad Rabi Ali, NT News. An outbreak of World Health Authorities in Kano State confirmed as gastroenteritis in Koyo, local government area of Minjibul. The Koyo community of Minjibo local government area of Kano State has resulted in six deaths and 26 admissions at the Minjibo General Hospital. Hadiza Muhammad tells us more. The Commissioner of Health, Dr. Ibrahim Tsanyawa, said the ministry has received a report on the outbreak of gastroarthritis in Koyo community of Azure Ward in Minjibo local government area. This calls for the prompt intervention of a team from the State Ministry of Health to the area and line listed some patients. Presently, six people have lost their lives as 26 bedridden at the Minjibur General Hospital are receiving treatment. Out of the 62, uh, we have discharged so far 30 patients and we have lost six patients. Interventions have since been extended to even neighboring areas of Koyo community. The State Commissioner of Health, Dr. Ibrahim Zanyawa, advised the general public to improve on personal and environmental hygiene and avoid consuming powdered drinks to maintain good health. We had some outbreak about three, four weeks ago, which were associated with consumption of this unwholesome enzyme and other powdered drinks. So we also discourage the use of enzyme the state ministry is further conducting medical investigation on the outbreak. In Kano, Hadiza Muhammad, NTA News. Muslims in Nigeria continue to celebrate the end of Ramadan fast with prayers and supplication to Almighty Allah. Emmanuel Akila reports that Imam Aliu Hamari Walama led the congregational Eid prayers in Gombe State. In Kano, Abdullahi Mustafa reports that at the Kofa Mata Central Eid Ground, a large congregation of worshippers prayed alongside Governor Abdullahi Umar Kanduje and Emir Aminu Adobayero. We congratulate the people of Kano and also we congratulate Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Still in the spirit of Ido Fitril, Governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Umar Kanduje, facilitated the release of more than 100 inmates of Kano Central Custodian Centers as ill health, age and improved characters were among the grounds for their release. From today, you must be born again. 
when you go back to your home, you must be a good citizen of your town, of your local government, of the state, and of Nigeria as a whole. Meanwhile, in Daura, this year's Ido Fitru Dorba was cancelled in consideration of the security challenges in some parts of Katsina State as the Emir Umar Farouk Umar directed that prayers for restoration of peace and security be held across the Emirates. And he also prayed for the unity of the country and the peaceful coexistence of Nigerians. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NT News. That was various Salah celebrations across the country from other states. Now let's take the Gambia report on Eid of Fidel. This is the climax of the 30 days fasting in the Islamic month of Ramadan by the Muslim community in Gombe State. After the two Rakat Eid prayers, clerics prayed for Nigeria to overcome security challenges, admonishing parents to train their children to imbibe peaceful lifestyle for a united and prosperous Nigeria. The Salah Daba, which showcased the rich cultural heritage of the House of Lani on the Joel in the Savannah, followed the Eid prayers, where Governor Mahmoud Inouye his deputy, Manasa Daniel Jato, and other government officials were hosted by the Emir of Gumbi, Al Haj Abubakar Shehu Abubakar III. Back at Government House is a lunch for all in the spirit of the celebration. The message by the governor is that of patriotism and peaceful coexistence for development. We pray that others one another will give us peace, not only in the state, but in our neighborhood states, in the northern Nigeria and in the wider Nigeria as well. Let us the people thank God for peace in the state and a successful spiritual rejuvenation in the month of Ramadan. Two things. Two things is first to ask all of us, the people and all other persons, to continue praying for the country. The celebration continued peacefully across the state. In Gombe, Emmanuel Akila, NTA News. Still staying in Gombe, the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, with production centers covering the nooks and crannies of the country, is exploring that capacity to push forward understanding among Nigerians for peaceful coexistence and development. Correspondent Emmanuel Akile reports that the role of broadcast house came to the fore during the visit by the Director General of the NTA to Gombe State. The management of NTA Gombe Production Center received the Director General who is on a working visit to monitor operations of the station to ensure that it keeps faith with NTA's mandate to the nation. For effective service delivery to Gombe State, in a parley with Governor Muhammad Inouye Yahya, Malam Yaqub Ibn Muhammad emphasizes on synergy to achieve the desired objectives. Young Gombe State in the Northeast region is set on the trajectory of development and for the policies and programs of the government to be fully implemented, it means all have to be on board. And the Nigeria Television Authority is working together with the state government to achieve this objective. I'm from Gombe. It takes less than two hours from Gombe to reach any of the northeastern state capitals. So Gombe State you know, occupies a very you know, strategic place in the northeast. And NTA being, uh, being the national uh, um, television, you know, should work with all states that uh, have the, the, the advancement of the country at heart. And Gombe State certainly is one of them. Governor Inouye Yahya appreciates the role of NTA in the efforts of the state government to keep Gombe State peaceful while the overall security challenge in the Northeast region is being contained. It doesn't seem we are doing enough in terms of you know, in terms of showing what we are doing. So we do have something that Despite challenges, the DJ expressed confidence in the running of NTA Gombe. In Gombe, Emmanuel Akila, NTA News. Thank you, Emmanuel. President Mohamedou Buhari has fully stated with Chief Monzo Olua Sago, publisher of Oriwo Sun newspaper, as he clocked 70 on Saturday, May 15, 2021. President Buhari salutes him for his resilience, which has seen him publishing Oriwo Sun for 36 years, turning it into the foremost community newspaper in the country. The president fully states with family, friends, and professional colleagues of Oluo Sago, asking the media entrepreneur to use his professional skills in nurturing younger crop of journalists who would value fidelity to ethics and professionalism. He wishes him longer life and greater wisdom to serve the society and journalism, a profession he loves so much.
Time now to join Michael in our Lagos studio for more reports from that zone. Hello, Michael. Hello, Jumai. As neighboring countries continue to record cases of COVID-19 new variant, Lagos State Government says more stringent COVID-19 protocols will be introduced to check importation and transmission of the more deadly variants by inbound passengers into Lagos State. Commissioner for Health, Professor Akia Bayomi, stated these while briefing journalists on steps being taken to curb the spread of the pandemic in Lagos. The Commissioner for Health, Professor Aki Abayomi, said, given the huge cost and length of time required to carry out the sequencing process, Lagos State Government will deploy a three-phased approach to detect mutant strains of the virus. Phase 1 will involve a short-term deployment of mutant PCR kits, while samples will be sent to local and foreign partners for sequencing in the mid-term phase. The long-term phase seeks to boost the capacity of Lagos State to purchase its own sequencing technology. We are preparing and building resilience, first of all, to ensure that we make it very difficult for this, for a mutant or new strain virus to enter Lagos. But if it should, that we stop it in its tracks and we stop it from being transmitted into community and causing community transmission. He stressed that apart from restrictions placed on inbound passengers from India, Brazil and Turkey by the federal government, Lagos State government is taking proactive measures to monitor movements of passengers from selected countries where mutants are circulating. Professor Abayami insists that non-pharmaceutical interventions and respiratory hygiene as well as other COVID-19 protocols will remain in force and must be strictly adhered to. In Lagos, Musa Tolia, NTA News. There is a new and baffling reason why mobile phones get stolen these days. Findings have shown that the robbers no longer steal devices with intents to sell, but for more sinister reason, digital fraud. Imole Ayotoke Diogunfowura investigates this wave of crime and how individuals can avoid being victims. I act for a living. My kind of hacking is called SIM transaction. It's a form of local hacking. I work on SIM card that receive bank transaction alert and withdraw all the money from the victim's account. At first glance, it doesn't even look educated but it somehow acquired a complicated technical skill that has cost law-abiding citizens their money. For the alleged crime, this 27-year-old man was arrested by the Nigerian police. He allegedly hacks into people's phones and withdraws money from the victim's bank account. In his confession, he revealed that the theft is aided by just the same card and the bank verification numbers, BVN. The big question is, how susceptible is a SIM card to fraud? For now, it wasn't so much of a security risk. Now, because a SIM card has a memory on it that can store phone numbers and other details, particularly even up to SMS, for instance, uh, whenever an account goes through your, your phone records and SMS, it can pick out some information that it can use on that. Many Nigerians say they have been defrauded in this manner. In about two hours after my phone was stolen, I saw a debit alert from, that was through my mail, through my email. I checked with my friend's phone and then immediately I called my bank. How can people safeguard their SIM cards from hackers? When you save things on the phone, make sure that your phone is passworded or preferably use biometrics. So biometrics are things like your fingerprint, your eyes, your face. With those features, even if someone steals your phone, they can't get your fingerprint, they can't get your eyes. The best thing you do to be able to save yourself all this edit is to password your SIM card. Once you password your SIM card, you are safe. Experts, however, pointed out that more work needs to be done on the part of financial institutions in terms of beating the hackers at their game and protecting customers' deposits. In Lagos, Imole Ayotokide Ogunfowura, NTA News. Business News is next, and Abolade Salami is standing by. Hello, Bolade. Thank you, Michael. Good evening, and welcome to the Business News segment. 
promoting intra-regional trade for greater economic growth will provide an expanded market for transaction of business and create jobs for the teaming youths. Central Bank Governor Gordon Mefiele at a webinar said the Apex Bank, through its trade monitoring system portal, has helped reduce time for documentation process for goods meant to be exported. In resolving the challenges experienced by operators in the commodities exchange, Gordon Mefiele said efforts are ongoing to reposition the exchange as a way to support greater trade for operators in the sector. $100 billion are non oil export stimulation facility currently domiciled at the Nigerian Export Import Bank. And we would like to use this opportunity to encourage Nigerian businesses to please tap on this available facility at single digit interest rates, not only for the group, for the good of our people, but also for the export, to boost our export opportunities. And only recently, we received the approval of Mr. President for a total restructure and reposition in Nigerian commodity exchange. We believe that by the time this is fully re repositioned, some of the bottlenecks and challenges that are currently faced in the movement of food, our goods from our rural commodities or from farm to market, that those challenges will be eliminated. Let's switch gears now to the capital markets. Equities market appreciated in figures as trading of stocks resumed after two days of public holiday, appreciating by 0.25%. Details in the report. Trade of stocks on the NGS exchange at the last trading of the week inched up by 0.25%. As the All Share Index closed at 39,481.89 basis points, with a volume of shares traded at 219 million, valued at 2.92 billion naira, which exchanged hands in 4,107 deals, and a market capitalization of 20.5 trillion naira. Market breadth closed positive as Etana, with six cobalt gain, led on the table, followed by Regalins and NEM, gaining three cobalt and 18 cobalt respectively. Meanwhile, on the flip side, Academy with four copper depreciation laid on the loser stable, while Link Assurance and Japan Gold dropped in figures by six copper and four copper. On the activity chart, all sectors closed in green as NGX Banking, Consumer Goods, Insurance, and Oil and Gas appreciated by 1.13%, 0.61%, 0.57%, and 0.32%, while only NGX Industrial remained unchanged. And that does it on business news. Jumai in Abuja will be back with the rest of the news after this short time out. Please, do stay with us. for us to tell our stories so that our people will know their history and to make our people to get their mindset shaped for the right way. Now at Tori BDs for the best to region Naja dramas, telenovelas and sports, get your Go TV decoder, Go Tenna and one month Go TV Max subscription for only 9,500 Naira. Download my Go TV app to manage your account and enjoy better entertainment. Go TV. Love it.
Fulham travel to St Mary's after the heartbreak of relegation. Will they have any heart left to put up a fight against Southampton this Saturday? It's Southampton versus Fulham on the Premier League Live, showing on the network service of the NTA from 2.30pm. The Premier League Live is brought to you by Baba Ijabu in association with Goal.com. You're welcome back. We are now rejoining Fidet O'Hare, the Managing Director of Nigerian Railway Corporation, to speak more on the renewed vandalism. I have one question for you. What mechanism are being put in place to check this criminal act? And is there any plan for use of technology in monitoring the rails? We have a, a program to have satellite coverage but we cannot disclose the detail because it's a lot of security issues. And we have a committee working on the best way out, including the office of the DSS, the military intelligence agency, and a lot of uh, the police and the Nigerian civil defense. Uh, it's not what I can discuss on the uh, network because it's a security issue. But what we have done now is to try and sensitize the community. And uh, we have gone to the various local, local uh, government chairmen where this thing happened to support our drive. The Nigerian police and the Nigeria uh, Security and Civil Defense has also been mobilized to take proper action to ensure that these corporates are not let scot free. And not just the people vandalizing, they should be able to identify where they take them to. At the time, we caught a company in Bios, but it's unfortunate that it, <coughs> the NSCDC took them to a magistrate court and you just find the company 200,000, which uh, is not encouraging. It's that, that, that is rather frustrating. So we are talking with them and making sure that uh, we should allow patriotism to take the better part of us and ensure anybody caught are properly prosecuted. Okay, thank you so much, Fidet Ehere, the Managing Director, Nigerian Railway Corporation. Thank you for coming on Network News. The presidency says the ICPC fugitive declared wanted is not the president's in-law as being speculated in some sections of the media. The presidency explains that while at some point in time he sa the said fugitive had been linked to a family member in marriage, that relationship has ended some years ago. The statement says bringing the president's family into the case is an attempt to generate views and sell copies of sensational reporting. The presidency says President Buhari has, has always allowed the law to take its course and not providing any cover for crime, no matter who is involved. That a state institution can issue such a measure of the such is a measure of the administration's commitment to accountability, equality and justice. The Nigerian Air Force is set to again prove that it is able, ready and willing to ensure the integrity of Nigeria's airspace as its 57th anniversary celebration kicks off in Abuja. Defense correspondent Naja Atu Tijani has details. Ready, willing, able. This motto of the Nigerian Air Force has seen it evolve over 57 years into a formidable fighting force, which has adapted to the times by collaborating with other services in military operations. Kickstarting the series of events with special Jumat prayers, the Nigerian Air Force outlined some activities, which also include a church service in compliance with COVID-19 protocols. The 57th anniversary will be a low-key event, but it's structured to enlighten Nigerians of the Nigerian Air Force's efforts in the fight against insurgency, terrorism, and armed banditry in the country. With health and welfare being a central focus of the Nigerian Air Force, it is also organizing medical outreaches and is expected to unveil a telemedicine facility, the first of its kind in the armed forces of Nigeria. And the aim of establishing this facility is to enhance the provision of excellent medical care to personnel and their dependents as well as other civilian beneficiaries at the lowest possible cost. With the theme, Enhancing Nigerian Air Force Air Power Capabilities for Effective Joint Operations, the celebrations, which will mostly be held in Makudi, will showcase this aspect of response to contemporary security challenges. Najaa Tsutijani, 
NTA News. We'll take a quick break. The news continues shortly. New best thing. Cause I'm the new best thing. I'm the new best thing. Better than you've ever seen. I'm the Discover new Guinness Smooth. Perfectly balanced for a smooth, refreshing taste. Yeah, I'm the new best thing. You're welcome back. Now it's time for Sports Update with our IODG Makinde. Thanks, Jimmy. Now let's begin with Taekwondo, where Tokyo Olympics bound Elizabeth Ayana Cho has continued her intensive preparations towards a podium finish at the Games in Japan while sparring with six of Nigeria's best black belts in a fight camp in Abuja, supervised by 2008 Olympic bronze medalist Chika Chukumerije. The 21-year-old computer science undergraduate at the Federal University of Technology, Oweri, and national champion has seen a build-up to the Games hit by paucity of funds, with only a few contributing to her pre-Olympics World Taekwondo-sanctioned tournaments amid COVID-19 challenges. Like, it's one of the best section for me right now because I haven't gotten a lot of competition for a while. So this camp right now is very, very good for me because it will help me keep the fighting spirit going on. In football, four Nigeria Professional Football League-based players, including Anayo Iwala and goalkeeper Ike Chuku Ezenwa, have been included in the 31 provisional list of players invited by Super Eagles technical advisor Genot Roar ahead of the international friendly between Nigeria and Cameroon at Vienna Neustadt in Vienna, Austria on June 4. Others invited at Leicester City's duo of Wilfred Ndidi and Kelechi Anacho, just as team captain and Kano Pillars forward Ahmed Musa, France-based Terry Murphy and Belgian league top scorer Paul Unwachu made the cut. The friendly is part of preparations for the Super Eagles of Nigeria, who qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon next year. So the English Premier League now, where Southampton welcome already relegated Fulham to St. Mary's on Saturday at 3 p.m. in a match that will be on the NTA network with studio live at 2.30 p.m. Also, West Ham United's quest for European football next season will be tested when the Hammers visit Brighton at the MX Stadium. In tennis, Rafael Nadal recorded a resounding victory 6-3-6-4 over Alexander Zverev at the Rome Masters to reach the last four slated for Saturday. The world number three laid recent speculations about his form to, in recent weeks to rest by defeating sixth-seeded Zverev, who earlier knocked him out of the Madrid Masters last week. 34-year-old Nadal would now challenge Rayleigh really Opelka after the American world number 47 qualified for his first ever ATP 1000 Masters event semis following a hard-fought 7-5-7-6 victory over Argentine Federico de Bonis in the last eight. And that's your sports. It's back to Jamie for the rest of the news. Thank you, Ayo Deji. Glad Nadal won a winning spree. Well, that's network news for tonight. A pleasure having you join us. Don't forget to be a star with NTA as we wage war against rape and rapists. I am Jumwa Yosef.